sorry, I, I started choking on that last song because the lyrics are just so beautiful, eh? you know? It's so unusual that it's frightening. God sees right through the mess inside me. But I'm fully known and loved by Him. What a beautiful song. Yeah. What a beautiful song. How are we this morning? Blessed. 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 I like it. Praise the Lord. I was just recovering from the little cry I had. <laughs> Man, God is just so good, eh? It's like, you know, it's just so hard just to capture who God is. You know, there's just no words that can fully and perfectly describe Him. You know, He's indescribable. But this morning we want to look at life from the inside out. Life from the inside out. What is life from the inside out? We're going to... Um, this morning we're going to explore a little bit of that, and hopefully, hopefully I can help you this morning to understand what life on the inside is. We saw it um, with the multimedia, where things that are happening on the outside can affect things that are happening on the inside, isn't that right? But things on the inside can affect things that happen on the outside, isn't that also true? So we're going to have a look at that. How do, how do we live life from the inside out? How do we live life from the inside out? Just give me a second. I'm just, I shouldn't have rolled this piece of paper. <laughs> All right. So life from the inside out. We want to have a look at what is inside me. Because we all have something inside us. We all have an inner person. We have an inner person that longs to just break out, right? Does anybody get a feeling like, man, there's just so much going on inside me, I don't know what's going on. Has anyone had that feeling? Yeah. yeah. All of us have, eh? We get this thing that stirs up inside us and, you know, just something within us is just, but sometimes we can't put the finger on it, eh? And so, Let's have a look at what life is on the inside out. And you know, there's so much, there's so much that you have inside you. Do, you. do you do you believe that? You have so much inside you. You have so much within you that you can offer. Life from the inside out. <coughs> now, first we must, we've got to um, realize where life came from. And I'm just going to take you through a little, just a little like a little walkthrough of, of how things started. You see, God said, let us make man kind in our image, in our likeness. So when God created the heavens and the earth, he made all the, the animals, the trees, the, um, everything else. And then he made us. And he, says, he said, let us make man in our image. So when God was making you, he was forming you as a representation of him, who he is, the creativity, just the, you know, all, that th all the things that God is, he made that into you. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? When he was making you, in, in our image, in our likeness, let's make man and woman just like us, like, like me, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We're going to make people and they're going to be just like me. They're going to represent me. They're going to... It's like... It's like um, it just, we are like this capture thing of who God is. And that's just... I'm, I reckon it's amazing, eh? And so he made man and woman. Man and woman, he created them. You know God is a spirit, right? When God was making man, <coughs> we are created in his image. We are spiritual. We have a soul. We, we, this, this outside world, this out, outer life, we call it the flesh, the outer life is just the shell. It's just who we are on the outside. But what matters more is who God created us on the inside. The spirit man, the spirit being. Because he is made in the image of God. He or she is made in the image of God. In the beginning, then the Lord God made 
Oh, then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. So we've got, the, we've got God who, who created man out of dust, but he's not yet a living being. He's just this empty shell that has no life yet. But it says, and he breathed the breath of life into him. The life on the inside is your spirit. God breathed life into your spirit. He breathed his spirit into you. Because God is life. And without God, there is no life. There is no life outside of God. And God breathed his very life into you. And you became a living being. Man became a living being. <laughs> and it wasn't until he breathed in us until we lived. Then the Lord God made a woman and from the rib he had taken out of the man and brought her to the man. So God made man and woman and he gave them life. God created us. He gave us life. And then something else happened afterwards. <laughs> we, we all can have a guess, right? Genesis 2, 16, 17, and the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Now God had created Adam and Eve. He's breathed, he's breathed life into them, and now he's given them a command, right? It's not a rule. People, I mean, I talk to a lot of people, and they say, how is it free will when you're not allowed to do this? But it's not about you're not allowed to do this. It's a command. It's a warning. God warns us. You can, you're free to do whatever you want, but here's a warning. Don't do this because there's consequences, right? And so, so God gave a command, and he says, when you, when you eat this fruit, you will die. You will certainly die. He's not talking about you're not allowed to eat this fruit. He's talking about if you disobey me, you will die. If you don't listen to what I say, and don't do what I say, you will die. We all know what happens, eh? <laughs> we all know what happens. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came through all people, to all people, because all have sinned, right? So, when Adam and Eve had eaten the apple, which was a direct disobedience to what God had said, and by the way, God told Adam, and not Eve. Eve wasn't around when God had given that command. Why isn't this working? Did you guys see that? When Adam and Eve bit the apple and disobeyed God, God withdrew his presence from them. God withdrew the life from them because now they even though they have this physical body remember they're spiritual beings but the life had left them you will surely die they died spiritually when they had eaten the apple when they disobeyed God and that's what sin does sin causes death sin entered this world and now we are all dying because of what happened from Adam and Eve isn't that right does this make sense yeah Therefore, when Adam and, Eve, Adam and Eve had children, they were all born into sin, just like the rest of us. We are born into sin because sin has, is, is uh, what's the word, contaminated, corrupted, polluted this world. But that's, you see, we, we have a problem. There's a problem. We, we're all dying. We're dying physically and we're dying spiritually. We are dying. Houston, we have a problem. You know what a plane does, right? Is it a plane? Yes, it is a plane. When the plane's going and they're starting to, you know, you guys, I see it on the movies. I don't know what the actual thing is, but, you know, the, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> you know? It's just like life. Sometimes we think we're living life on this high when actually the plane of life is like this because of sin. Because we are sinful. It's our nature. We're born into the sin nature, right? That is life. That is our inside life. 
That's how we begin life, spiritually dead in our sins. But I want to look at, there's hope too, by the way, guys. <laughs> so don't lose hope, there's hope. Okay? And by the way, like, I think about it now. God says you surely will die, right? That means when Adam and Eve sinned, the right thing for God to do was punish them right then and there. But if we open our eyes and look around, how many people are here in this world today? Do you see the love and grace of God? Even though man stuffed up, right, God still pursues a relationship with him. God still pursues to make things right. Yeah, he's just a, such an awesome God. All right, so I found this, this um, thingy, thingy, uh, the, so it's, it's, like a, it's like a chart of what you're made up of, right? So on the outer layer, we have the body, which is the physical things. The body, like your, <coughs> your physical body, your, anything that is seen, right? Anything that is seen. You've got your physical body, your material body, your seen, your five senses. So you've got see, touch, taste, see, touch, taste, smell, hear. And, and that's, that's what your, your body is made of. And then you've got your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your personality. That is where your, um, I guess, it's like a, like a processor in the, in the computer. Would that be right? Would that be right? A computer can't run without a processor. So it's just like our soul is a processor of our bodies. And then you've got the spirit, right? Your spirit, which is your innermost being, your, the core person of who you are. That's where God had breathed into, right? And so you're, the blue part, the spirit, that's the part where you're either dead in your sins or you're alive in Christ. There are only two, uh, two, um, two ways that the spirit is either dead or alive. You're either dead in your sins or you're alive in Christ. And this is where the spirit of God comes and yokes with your spirit. This, you, the spirit of God comes and dwells in that, in that part where your spirit is held. So that's this body, I guess you could say, like Paul says, is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit dwells right in us, right with us, alongside us. Amen? Okay, so, but I wanted to have a look at, like, it all depends on your perspective, eh? How you experience the world, it depends on how you see things. You know, like, like this guy, Jesus said it, like he says, whatever the heart is full of, the mouth speaks. And so our physical body is like, a reflector of what's going on inside us. Isn't that true? Like, if we're, if we're so, um, you know, if we experience the world, the outside world, sorry, if we allow the outside world to determine who we are inside, we're going to walk around so defeated because you just see so much heavy stuff that's going on, you know? But there's also good stuff that goes on in this world. There's all, there is. Jesus said, Whatever is in your heart will come out, right? But it, it works the other way around as well, because whatever you let in fills your heart. Amen? So, but we, want, we don't want to live like that. We want to live from the inside out. It doesn't matter what goes on around us. We can have that life of joy, of peace, of power with the Lord. Okay. So... C.S. Lewis puts it this way, you, do, you don't have a soul, you are a soul, right? Your soul, your will, your mind, your emotions. You have a body. If we, if we shift that thinking from like, I'm a person with a soul, no, you are a soul, you just have a body. Things will dramatically change. Now, <clears throat> if you could turn with me, if you got your Bibles, could we turn to um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I found this really cool, um, 
Am I there? Yep. I found this really cool, cool bit of scripture that um, is written by Solomon, that Solomon put, and he's talking about um, pretty much life, right? So Ecclesiastes is talking about life, like, what is life all about, and what is, you know, and in, in this context of it, like, we live life, right? We live life, and we're going to die, and we're getting, we, we die, every day we live, we die. We're getting closer to death. But look at the way, um, okay, so look at the way Solomon puts this, I've, and it's, I reckon it's so beautiful, so beautiful, Okay. This is what life is on the outside. Remember, so I'll go to, uh, I'll go, I'll start from the first verse. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, and the years approach you when you will say, I find no pleasure. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark, and the clouds return after the rain. So Solomon's talking about in the days of your youth, remember God, because when you're older, things change. But when you're younger, you're able to enjoy life and enjoy a life with God. So he's saying, remember God in, in the days of your youth, before these days approach when you're getting older. He says in verse 3, when the keepers of the house tremble. Look at this beautiful metaf metaphoric way that Solomon puts it. When the keepers of your house tremble. Have you ever, I mean, I'm not old, but I talk to old people, and when they hold things there, they, <laughs> that's the keepers of your house. That's what protects you. The keepers of your house tremble. And the next verse, and the strong men stoop. So Solomon's talking about, this is life on the outside. The strong men stoop. These two guys, they're no longer standing tall anymore. They're stooping like this. Yeah? And it's, it's, it's just beautiful the way Solomon puts this. And the, and the next verse, oh, sorry, the next part, when the grinders cease because they are few. <laughs> the grinders cease because they are few. There's no more grinding. You can't chew your food anymore. You only have few teeth. The next part, and those looking through the windows grow dim. See, your eyes start to, you can't see that well anymore. You're starting to wear out. This is, this is what happens with life on the outside. And the sound, oh, sorry. And when the doors to the street are closed, so, you know, old people don't really, I'm not dissing old people. You guys are young, by the way. <laughs> I see, you guys are young, okay? You're young. You'll see what I'm talking about soon, right? So old people, don't, you don't really see them going out. I remember I was working in, um, <coughs> I was working in, 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 in a, um, a, a rest home in, in Johnsonville. I forget the name of it. it starts with an E. You might know it. It's, but we, so there's, there's like one, two, there's about four wings. So four wings, there's, there's, there's one wing here, and we, we were working on the, the second wing, right? <laughs> This, um, that wing was getting upgraded, you know, a lot of construction work going on. So what they did was they barricaded it. They barricaded it so that the, the, um, the residents, they couldn't come through because it's dangerous. It's, it's a construction site. And I was plastering away. I was plastering. And then I saw this old woman walk past the window. And I thought to myself, did she get past the barrier? <laughs> How did she get past it? It's, it's fully, you know, like there's barricades, there's, there's like fences this high, right? And I thought to myself, oh man, she got out. What do we do? So I told the bill, I ran and told the bill, I said, bro, bro, one of the, one of the oldies got out. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and we, we ran down the corridor, and he goes, are you sure? Are you sure? I said, yes. I, she looked right at me when she walked past the window. And, and we, so we ran to the corridor, and when we got to the, the exit, she was almost at the street. And <laughs> I'll never forget this. She, raised her hands, and it's like she had freedom. For two seconds, and a nurse came and said, sorry, darling, you got to go back this way. And I thought, man, that, you, you know, we, we, when you get older, life doesn't have to be like that. 
you know, you can still have that freedom in God. And, but you see, old people, they lock themselves in sometimes because they're too old. They're too hard to go anywhere. <coughs> my mum's starting to get old and my dad. We have to go see them. They used to come around a lot, but yeah. <coughs> they only live down the road too. No. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I should go see mum and dad more. <laughs> hey. All right, so the doors to the street are closed, and the sound of grinding fades. The sound of grinding fades. You can't hear anymore. When people rise up, they have the sound of birds, but all their songs grow faint. That's talking about the hearing again. And when people are afraid of heights, when the people are afraid of heights, that you know what that happens? If you, your body's so fragile now, if you fall, you could break something. So you're afraid of heights, right? There are terror, there are dangers in the streets. They, they, these things are dangerous to potholes and uneven grounds and because their balance isn't so great anymore. So this is life on the inside. This is the physical life. You know, Solomon's talking about this is what happens in our world. This is what life is. And I love this one. The next part. When the almond tree blossoms, it's talking about you're here. <laughs> Your almond tree blossoms. This is an um, almond tree blossoming. Your hair goes all white. This is all. <laughs> I've always wanted white hair, by the way, since I was a teenager. It's like, man, I wish my hair was white. Yeah. I'll get it. Hope it happens faster. No, it's because um, I'll tell you why. Because. Um, Oh, there was an actor who had white hair, but he was still young. I think his name was Richard Gere. And I thought, hey, the guy looks pretty cool. Maybe I could pull that off. <laughs> but I'm Asian, so. <laughs> okay, so then I, I couldn't find any more um, pictures. But, you know, and he says, and the grasshopper drags itself along, and desire is no longer stirred. So you're not moving as fast as you would as a child. The grasshopper who used to leap, doesn't leap anymore. He, you know, and then he says, and the, then the people go to their eternal homes and mourners go about the streets and then we die. We live this life, we get old, we wear out, then we die. And mourners go about the streets and we have a funeral. Remember him before the silver cord is severed the silver cord being the, your spinal cord. The golden bowl is broken, your brain, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring, and the well broken at the well, and the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. You see, we are a spiritual being, and our spirits will live on, even though our outer man dies our spirit returns to God. And, and, but, but remember, Solomon reminds us, remember your creator in the days of your youth. When you were able to be strong, when you were able to bounce around, when you were able, you know, your sight is so good and you you know, he says, remember God in those days. It's, it's far better to remember God in those days. Not when you're wasted away and you're like, oh, I wish I was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wish I could have done all of this when I was like, Younger, but anyway, that's life on the outside, right? We, we die. We're dying. Our body's getting old. The longer we live, the closer we get to dying. Every minute, every second, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, we will be there. And we never know when we're going to die too. All right, so that's life on the outside. The, the, that's the flesh. Hmm? the flesh. But let's look at life on the inside. You see, we can t- take a look at life on the outside and, and let it affect who we are in here, right? Because if I let what I see around me affect my soul, my will, and my emotions, and my personality, it, and, and I let it hurt me, that means my spirit will be crushed. 
But if I live from the Spirit, which God created, where He dwells, and which is who I am really, then I can change the world around me. Amen? And I can experience the world differently. Is that okay? We'll, we'll have a look at that. And I'll turn to 2 Corinthians 4, if you want. I mean, the words will be up there, but... Two Corinthians four, there it is. Okay, this is no, this is Paul. This is Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul. He says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. So outwardly, my outer man, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Isn't that awesome? My outer man is dying, but my spirit man is being renewed day by day. More and more every day, God is building me up. God is filling me up. And God is renewing me from the inside. For light and momentarily, oh, so for light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So Paul says that our momentary troubles are only light compared to the eternal glory that's coming. You see, he's saying, even though I live in this, this, this world that's, and I have present troubles, it doesn't compare to what's coming. The flesh, the outer man, doesn't compare to the inner man. Isn't that right? Isn't that awesome? What we see and think and feel, and the, none of this can compare to what is inside us. Out here, momentary, momentary. You've got to think about now, the present weakness and future glory. Now is only momentary. Etern and the inner man, which is eternal, you can't compare now to eternity. So the now, this is the flesh. This is life on the outside. And then eternity, eternity is life on the inside. And you can have that life right now. You can live that life right now. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. You see that there's a contrast there. We don't look at what we see, the flesh, the physical. We don't fix our focus on that. We don't, like, that's not all life is. Because all life is is from the inside. The inside out. The, the spirit man lives, not the flesh man. Okay? Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Isn't that awesome? You want to hear the context of this? You want to hear the context of this? If you go, oh, I'm not even too, are you saying? I'll read it from the start. Just, and we're not going to study it for long. So. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to, to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The interesting point there, if people don't get the gospel, it's because their spirit hasn't come to life. They're perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Satan, the God of this age, has blinded the minds of them. He's blinded the unseen mind, not the physical, the unseen. Remember your mind, your soul, or your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's your soul. That's the unseen part of you. Satan has blinded that part of those who, who don't get it and they don't believe. So that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of the darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. God is light. God is light. And the light shone through Jesus Christ, manifested in him. And now that light shines in us, in our spirit, in our heart, 
our heart, that's who, what the Spirit is. Our heart is who you are. Your Spirit is who you are. Your Spirit is who you are, and it's where you make decisions. Who are, are you dead or are you alive in Christ? From your Spirit. Okay? And then he talks about um, them just being clay jars. Class of, uh, um, jars of clay. And he says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that, life of, so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. So Paul is saying, I carry the death of Christ on my body. Okay? Paul was getting persecuted and whipped and beaten and flogged and just left for dead. But he says, but I'm not destroyed. I'm not destroyed because inwardly I'm living, outwardly I'm dying. And it doesn't matter what happens to me on the outside because all I care about more is what's on the inside. I don't care about this temporary trouble. I care about the eternal glory. Isn't it Paul in Romans who said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Christ offers us life to the fullest, and he promises an eternal glory. He does not promise, however, that life will be easier, but he does promise that it will be worth it, that the present troubles will be worth it. No matter what I go through here on earth for God, I will live for you, Lord, because heaven is far greater than this earth. Eternity with you, Lord, is far greater than living for this momentary and then spending eternity cast away from you. You see, Paul fixed his eyes on the things unseen. Paul fixed his eyes on the spirit, man. He fixed his eyes on eternity and heaven and Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit in him. But if we live life for this now, for what we can get now, all we are doing is perishing. But with God and through the Spirit of God, you can have that eternal promise. And it is assured in Christ Jesus. I found this picture. You see, the inward man, the, the unseen man, right? And it, it had an interesting title. It says, if our spirit, if you could x-ray our spirit, the Holy Spirit should be the, 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 the structure of our spirit. You know, like our body has a flesh, and if we x-ray it, you see bones. I mean, if our spirit could have an x-ray, it would be the Holy Spirit, or it would be not there, dead. Okay, so, your spirit is far stronger than anything that can happen to your body. Your spirit is far stronger than anything that can happen to your body. That's why we want to live from the inside out, and not the outside in. We don't want this world around us to crush our spirit. But we want, if we live from the inside out, nothing can crush our spirit. And I want to tell you, if you have been living like that from the outside in, and your spirit's being crushed by what you see, what you feel, what you think, you know the Bible says that the Lord is close to those who have a crushed spirit. He's right there with you. All you've got to do is turn to him. Turn to him and he'll say, here you go, here's my spirit. Have my spirit, because I'm life, I'm love. And you can live this empowered life. Isn't it Jesus who said, do not fear the one who can destroy your body, but fear the one who can destroy both your body and your soul in hell. Don't be scared. If you're a believer of Christ, man, nothing in this world should scare you. Because greater is he who lives in you than the one who lives in the world. Amen. And for, for those of you who, if you're not a follower of Christ Jesus, man, this is, this is it's, it's, it's a free gift to you. It's offered to you, like, here it is. That's what Jesus done, here it is. Here it is, do you want it? Do you want this spiritual life? Some of us, I mean, speaking from my own experience, some of us in this room 
have been here for long, but yet is not experiencing this spiritual life, the spiritual fullness of God. I mean, I'm speaking from my own experience. Ten years I struggled fighting the flesh and trying to live in the spirit. You know, the Bible says that the, the flesh wants what is contrary to the spirit. The flesh wants to sin, but the spirit wants you to live. The flesh wants to die, but the spirit wants to live. And the two wage war against each other. The two are struggling against each other. But God says, live by my spirit. Be led by my spirit. But you know, Jesus says, and when he was talking to Nicodemus, he said, truly, truly, I tell you, nobody, nobody at all can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Unless the spirit man is born again. The spirit man is dead in his sins and transgressions. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless that spirit man is born again. Born by God, not of human will, not of um, works. A gift of God. Born again in the spirit. Experiencing life to the fullest. I tell you, man, 10 years I struggled. I thought I was born again. I thought I was born again. But don't, don't get caught in that lie. You know, being born again doesn't come when you come to church, when you raise your hands and sing a song, when you pray this many times a day. Born again is the way you live. Jesus said when he was on the surf, the Father looks for those who will worship him and will worship him in spirit and in truth. And unless your spirit is born again, you cannot have a relationship with God. And the only way to God the Father is by Jesus Christ. No one can come to the Father except through me, through Jesus Christ. I want to put that invitation out. If you're not born again, man, all you got to do is say, yes, Lord. That's all it is. All God wants is a response from us, is to believe and repent, and you will receive eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He made that way possible through the, his death and his sacrifice. Man, I'm so passionate about this because I know I've, I've lived a de- like a dead man for so many years. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. So I encourage you. Come to the Lord, man. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and and heavy burdens, for I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, my spirit, yoke together with your spirit. My burden is light. My burden is light. Amen? So you, you might be asking, man, I want this, I want this. You see, it's a free gift of God. You just come to the cross, you come to Jesus Christ and you say, Lord, I repent, Lord. I want to live for you. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me. You know, and he says, because of his great love for us, God, who was rich in mercy, I can't see up there, made alive, or made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. What an awesome God. I was dead to him. I was dead to him. A dead man can do nothing, but the grace of God came and changed my life. That's why I cried during that song, because he saw the mess in me, and I remembered so many things I've done, but God loved me, and he said, I love you, and I'm going to save you, and you're going to live with me now and forever. The same thing is for you. God loves you so much. Don't sit here and don't come to church week in and week out a dead man because Christ died and he was risen from the dead and he's going to raise you who believe with him. We die with Christ and we're raised with him. He loves you, man. He loves you. I want to pray. Can we do something different? I want to pray. Could we all bow our heads, please?
We will bow our heads, please. We will bow our heads. If you're not a follower of Jesus, and you want to be, you raise your hands. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, raise your hands. If you have been coming to church, but you've been living from the outside, you haven't been living from the inside out, raise your hands. You want to be different? You want God to, you want God to use you for his glory? I encourage you, raise your hands, man. God is here. He wants to bless you. He gives it freely. If we, if we lack we ask God, and he gives without finding fault. I encourage you as well, don't be in denial, man. Don't be in denial. You know, today might be your last day. Today might be your last day. Father God, I want to thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, for your spirit, Lord. Father, that you have, for your spirit, that you have poured out on us from heaven, Lord God that you have made us alive with you, Lord Jesus, even when we were dead to our sins, Lord God. And Lord, for those who have been living from the outside, Lord, we want to live differently, Lord God. We want to live from the inside out, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you may have prayed this morning. And um, <clears throat> for those of you who think, well, I'm a Christian, that's actually not the statement. That's not the truth. And to pick up what Shannon said, there's a little scripture in Ephesians that says this, that, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ. This is, he's talking about being darkened in your understanding. And we're taught in him according with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and hol holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood, speak truthfully to your neighbor, for you're all members of one body, and your anger don't sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give foothold to the devil. And then it goes on to talk about unwholesome talk, and it talks about um, only doing things that will build other people up. If you're finding you play, you're not in that space, I want to I just suggest something to you. I think Christians have often thought that they, they've come to Jesus, and they've made a decision, they're going to heaven. The Bible doesn't say that, and really Shantom was picking up on that. It's the inside that God wants us to pick up on. I think there might be some people here that need prayer this morning. Because you've, you've, you, your words and your actions, your thoughts, uh, proneness to, 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 to gossip or, or inappropriate behavior in any way, God wants to free you. He wants to bring you in that place. And Shannon led you in a prayer before. Some, some of you may need to take a step further to pick that up and to go further. So come and talk with one of us so you can really be free, not just attending church. I want God to be Empowering you because it says put off your old self and don't go back to the former way of life. Uh, you really need to do that. I have a real clear picture from God that there's some people here that, that really need to say, okay, God, I want, I want to give everything. I don't want to hold back anymore. I don't want to have my life messed up. I don't want to be doing things that are not right. I really want to be with you because the fact of the matter is that God wants you in that place. Amen? He wants you to know his love. So, so let, let's um, give another hand to the team, including Shanton, for everything I've done here this morning. <laughs> Mate, God bless you. Five o'clock, we're going to have a celebration service. Come ready to celebrate now you've been set free. Amen. <laughs>